Here we have a two-way loudspeaker application. Our low frequency driver will be a 10 inch woofer. It will be assigned to DSP number one. Number four will be our highs. It's a six by six rectangular source about a foot above the position of the woofer and six inches behind assigned to DSP number two. Now what we have here is the impulse response, the phase response, the magnitude response, and the vertical polar response of our array. Right now everything looks nice and pretty, but we haven't added any filters. So for our subwoofer, we'll add a 24 dB link with Riley, that's a fourth order filter. And just to make things simple, we'll cross them over at one kilohertz. Third order Butterworth, go to our highs, do the same, do a fourth order link with Riley. Okay, and immediately we see a comb filter, and this comb filter is caused by the electrical interaction between the, the crossovers. Over here we see the impulse response. <coughs> this is the arrival of our highs. Uh, included with the the uh, impulse response of our DSP and here's our, our lows. If we zoom in a little bit you can see that maybe a little bit better. The green is our microphone. Okay, the microphone lo location is about one foot uh, almost directly on axis and about five feet away from the loudspeaker. So to fix this, what we'll do is we'll analyze the phase response, rotate the phase response, and what we'll try to do is add signal alignment to kind of fill in this, this void, this gap between the phase relationship. So the question you have to ask now is which one's leading, which one's lagging? Well, this is the highs, so the highs are actually lagging and coming in later than the lows, which is pretty evident because our highs are a good six inches behind our low frequency driver. So we'll go to our high frequency DSP and in real time add signal delay and we'll see the phase response change and get rid of this gap. We'll see the vertical polar response get cleaned up, we'll see the impulse response arrive on time, and we'll see the magnitude response flatten out. Oops. That's not it. Let's try that one more time. And if we keep going, what we actually see is, while this might be a little, a little wobbly, over here, it's very smooth, very uniform. So doing crossover alignment has a lot more to do, a lot more than just the electrical response, the magnitude response, and, and getting a proper phase alignment. It's looking at the entire coverage area of the loudspeaker. And of course, if we flip the polarity of one of these loudspeakers, we get all chaos. Our balloon coverage falls apart. We lose pattern control. We get a cancellation at crossover frequency. We get a cancellation over here. Lots of problems.